Welcome back to Bagel Top Games for the 100 subscriber viewers choice special. Thank you to everybody who participated in the survey to pick the setup for this game. We had a whole bunch of respondents picking hundreds of different cards and I'm happy to reveal the results today and then play a game with what you have picked. So let's get into it. As you can imagine, lots of different cards got votes, so on the charts that you're about to see, I'll be showing you the cards that got at least three or more votes. All right, here's the first one. We'll start with the masterminds. And here are your mastermind choices. As you can see, a whole bunch of them got three, four, and five votes, some really great choices. In third place, we have Mysterio at seven votes. Dark Phoenix got second place with 10 votes. And then in first place, Apocalypse with 11 votes for this mastermind. So he will be our mastermind for this game, for better or worse. As you can see, J. Jonah Jameson got close. He got three votes for his epic version and three votes for his standard version, but combined that would have only put him in fourth place anyway. So it's Apocalypse today. So let's go ahead and place him here. All right, now it's time to find out what Apocalypse is scheming. Let's go ahead and look at the results. Drum roll, please. And tied for fourth place is a whole bunch of schemes with three votes. In third place, we have a four-way tie with Detonate the Helicarrier, Capture Baby Hope, Horror of Horrors, and the Dark Phoenix Saga. Second place went to Dark Alliance with five votes. And then in first place, the clear winner, House of M, with six votes. Now, this scheme is going to cause some trouble when we're talking about assigning winning heroes. But I'll get to that in a little bit. For now, let's go ahead and make sure we have House of M on the board. Now, who have you selected to aid Apocalypse in his House of M scheme? Let's take a look at the villains results. We had a lot of great choices here. We had a big tie for third place between the Deadlands, Shadow X, Great Lakes Avengers, Four Horsemen, Deadpool's Friends, and Dark Avengers. In third place, we had the Black Order of Thanos with seven votes and the Infinity Gems, one with eight votes. So in order to accommodate the top two villain groups, we're going to have to make some adjustments. So Apocalypse usually always leads the Four Horsemen, but for this game, we will pretend that he is leading the Black Order of Thanos. So his always lead says Four Horsemen villains get plus two attack. So for this game, Black Order of Thanos villains will get plus two attack. Now take a look at the Apocalypse wins condition when Famine, Pestilence, War, and Death have escaped. So because we don't have those cards in this villain group, we'll make an adjustment. If Black Dwarf, Super Giant, and Corvus Glaive escape, as well as either Proxima Midnight or Ebony Maw escape, then we'll call that in a win for Apocalypse as a replacement for the Four Horsemen villains escaping. Now for the Henchmen, a much smaller pool of cards to choose from, so let's see what happened here. All right, we have a three-way tie for third place between Thorcore, Ghost Racers, and Cape Killers, each with seven votes. Sentinel, surprisingly, at second place with 10 votes. And then we have our first first place tie between the Brood and Mandarin's Rings with 12 votes each. Now, in order to break this tie, I'm going to do a simple dice roll with my giant 20-sided die. If the number is odd, I will go with the Brood. And if the number is even, I will go with Mandarin's Rings. Let's go ahead and give it a roll. All right, that's 12, which means that it is an even number, and Mandarin's Rings will be the henchman for this game. Mandarin's Rings and Infinity Gems, an interesting combination. I can't wait to see how this plays out. Now, before I show you the results for heroes, and there were a lot of votes for a lot of different heroes, we need to take a look at the House of M scheme real quick. All right, check out the setup. Eight twists, hero deck is four X-Men heroes and two non-X-Men heroes, or substitute another team for all X-Men icons on both sides. Add 14 Scarlet Witch hero cards to the villain deck. Now right there we already have some restrictions on what we can and cannot use in our hero deck. For example, Scarlet Witch. If she happens to be one of the top voted heroes, she unfortunately is disqualified because we need her for the villain deck for this scheme. Another rule is that four of the six heroes I choose must be either X-Men heroes or they all must share the same team. So we will look at the list of top voted heroes find the hero team that applies to most of those, and that will be our team that has to have four cards in the hero deck. All right, with that, let's go ahead and look at who you voted for. So all in all, we had 13 heroes that got more than four votes. Let's take a look at the top three. Agent Phil Coulson is in third place with six votes, in second place, Captain Marvel with seven votes, and in first place, Nightcrawler with eight votes. Now, if we look at team affiliations, we have three that only have one, no team, Guardians, and S.H.I.E.L.D., two of them are Marvel Knights, and then we have a tie between four X-Men and four Avengers heroes, but there is a problem. Scarlet Witch is one of the four Avengers heroes, and based on the scheme, as we discussed before, she is disqualified from being in the hero deck. So out of eligible heroes, there are only three Avengers here and four X-Men. So we're going to go with the top four X-Men as part of our scheme-allowed hero deck and put those four in. So those four are going to be Nightcrawler at the top, of course. Then we have 
Iceman, Apocalyptic Kitty Pride, and Angel. So those will be the four X-Men in our hero deck. Now we're allowed two more heroes, so for the final two, we'll go with the highest scoring non-X-Men heroes, and that's going to be Captain Marvel at second place, and Agent Phil Coulson in third place. So that's going to be our hero deck. And I think that's it for our setup. Once again, thank you everybody who voted. This is going to be a really exciting game, and it's uh, been really fun to see what you guys came up with. All that's left to do is add the five Master Strikes and the eight Scheme Twists as specified by the scheme. And I'll go ahead and put the two bystanders underneath the Scheme Twist there, and now we can get everything shuffled. All right, let's populate our HQ. Who are we starting with? I want Iceman right off the bat. Angel, Coulson, Captain Marvel, and another Captain Marvel. Pretty good mix. All right, let's see what your choices throw at me. Let's get started. All right, let's do our first villain pull. And we have, oh, Black Dwarf right off the bat. All right, an ambush effect of Danger Sense 2, helping all Black Order villains and the Mastermind play a Master Strike revealed this way. So the way Danger Sense works is you reveal the top two cards of the villain deck. For every villain you pull, the villain in question and the Mastermind get one attack point this turn. So let's see what we have. Okay, here are the top two of the villain deck, and we have one villain and a Master Strike. This is especially bad because Black Dwarf specifically says to play a Master Strike we revealed this way. So let's put Supergiant back on top, and we're gonna play this in a second, but let's make sure we get Black Dwarf's Danger Sense points. So Black Dwarf and the Mastermind get a temporary attack point increase of one until the next turn. I'm gonna put the dice below the card to remind myself that it's temporary, but there's some other points that Black Dwarf is going to get. Now the four horsemen villains, because Apocalypse is leading them, get plus two attack. Now since we're using Black Order in place of four horsemen, the Black Order also gets plus two. So we're gonna go ahead and put a plus two on top of him as well. So right now he's four base plus two from the mastermind that makes six plus one makes seven with the danger sense. So yeah, real strong right off the bat, but I do have to play this master strike as part of his ambush effect. Now actually it's kind of a good thing to get these master strikes out of the way early. Each player reveals their hand and puts all their heroes that cost one recruit or more on top of their deck. So one that cost one or more. Uh, I haven't recruited anything, so they all cost zero, so nothing happens. If I can keep pulling master strikes right now, that would actually be ideal. And I actually happen to have all shield agents. That doesn't often happen, that's great. So with my six recruit, the most expensive thing I could recruit is this Colson. Let's take a look. Now when we look at tech cards, there's not a lot of tech cards across all of these heroes. There's a lot of blue and green ranged in strength, but not a lot of tech. However, if I happen to get lots of Colson cards, I can quickly fine tune my deck and get rid of all the gray cards and really have an effective deck going on, especially if I get some other effective cards in here. The problem is, when this scheme transforms, I'm going to want as many non-X-Men heroes in the HQ as possible to make sure I don't lose. But since this was the hand that was dealt and I do have 6 recruit right away, I think I'm going to go with this just to start getting the left side a little more fine-tuned right away. It is a risk, but we'll see how it pays off. Let's go ahead and recruit Coulson here. That being said, if I want to recruit non-X-Men, this is the time to do it. Oh man, that's... Oh, that's coming out on turn 1. Gotta watch out for this one. The number one card of the number one hero. I may not even have a chance to recruit this. So basically I get to teleport other cards along with him. Very good. Okay, one big recruit and that's it for turn one. And we already know, thanks to Danger Sense, that Supergiant is entering the city and she has an ambush effect herself. Danger Sense 1, helping all Black Order villains and the Mastermind play a villain you revealed this way. Let's see who we reveal and it's only one. It is a Mandarin ring, which is a villain. So let's put her back and give all of our Black Order villains in the Mastermind, their extra point. And now we play the villain that we have revealed, which is a ring. If you're not familiar with the Mandarin's rings, there are very unique henchmen in that each card is different, unlike the other henchmen. This one is zero, the Ice Blast. When I fight it, I choose a card I play this turn that costs zero. And when I draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn, add that card to your hand as an extra hand. So you basically get to teleport it. Not as much luck with this hand, but still decent. Unfortunately, this means I can't fight anything, but let's see what there is to recruit. I see Iceman right there. Iceman is arguably one of the best heroes in the game, so thank you guys for voting for him. Luckily, the scheme allowed me to recruit him. If it wasn't for the House of M, he wouldn't even shown up in the top six. I could see him comboing with Captain Marvel really well. And again, the goal is to make sure that there are no two Scarlet Witches in the city at the same time. So building up a lot of attack right away is a really good thing because I really do not want this scheme to transform. It's gonna make this so much harder. So let's go ahead and recruit Iceman right now. And besides the replacement here, that's all I'm gonna be able to do. These would be my choices for next turn, if possible. 
All right, not a bad flow of villains. I hope I continue the villains so that I don't get anything worse. And we've got, okay, our first Scarlet Witch. So thanks to the House of M scheme, she is a three plus three. So she is a six strength. I gotta get rid of these Scarlet Witches quickly so I avoid the scheme transition. Let's see if I can do it. Of course, I used all these shield agents last time, so all the shield troopers appear here. Now, the only thing I'll be able to fight with them is the Mandarin's ring. Showing you how hard these guys are going to be to beat. Oh, I forgot to give her her extra to attack because of the Mastermind. Yeah, this combo really makes it hard to fight anything right away. But I will fight that Mandarin's ring just because it's the only thing I can fight. And I basically get to teleport one of these cards. And since I'm not going to be able to generate more than four attack next turn, even if I draw all four shield troopers, I'm going to teleport one of these agents here. We're going to Ice Blast Pseudo Teleport. And it will be in my hand the next turn. So let's fight and KO this Ice Blast Mandarin's Ring. And with our two recruit, let's go ahead and get ourselves our first sidekick of the game. We've got a standard. And that's it. Let's hope this is not another Scarlet Witch or things are going to start to get tricky. Oh, another Mandarin's Ring. I'd rather these show up than most anything else in that deck. Okay, Remaker, the Matter Rearranger. Fight effect, you may choose a card from your hand or discard pile. The player on your right puts it in their hand. Interesting opportunity to shift something over. Another 4 and 2 combo. Unfortunately, once again, nothing to fight, but what can I recruit? I've already taken an Iceman, so one of these Captain Marvels may be useful. As typical with the Secret Wars cards, this is a dual type, strength and ranged. Great for working with Iceman, and it gives you one extra attack and drawing a card, basically a free attack, and a trigger for Iceman, so I will definitely recruit this. And then we're going to get our first, another Nightcrawler. If I can get Nightcrawlers going on the left side and uh, use that Coulson to whittle down all the shield agents, I can do a lot of teleporting. Let's see if that happens. The city is almost full, and now it's completely full. Thanks to you guys introducing even more complexity with our first Infinity Gem, here's the Power Gem, and it indeed has an ambush effect. The Power Gem gains a shard for each Master Strike in the KO pile and or stacked next to the Mastermind. Now I've used a Master Strike, but nowhere in the scheme or the Mastermind rules does it tell me to put them in the KO pile or next to the Mastermind, so the Power Gem does not gain any shards. Oh man, I had six Shield Agents thanks to the Ice Ring. One more and I could have gotten that rare Nightcrawler, darn. But what else can I get that would work with Coulson over there? I don't really plan on getting a lot of uh, green cards on this side, so this would be better suited for the right hand. This would fit well into my plans if I can indeed get maybe some Scarlet Witch cards over here and some other Nightcrawlers. Now, this is a little more expensive and gives me some more attack. However, I do have to discard something. However, this would work well as a multi-purpose attack gainer. You may discard a card, you get attack equal to that card's cost. That could be extremely useful for pinch decisions. Work really well with teleport if I can get it. It's honestly a pretty good card. I don't know what I'm going to do as far as instinct cards over here, but this is kind of too good not to get right now. Yeah, if I discard that 6 cost Coulson with this card, that's 8 attack right there. Yeah, this is definitely going to be worth it. I'm going to recruit this Angel Drop Off a Friend card. Except I forgot to play my cards and add up my points. So I've done that. 6 recruit. Spend 5 of it to get Angel. Now I've recruited it. Nothing else to do with 1 and 1, so... Oh, let's refill here. And... Hmm, maybe I'm going to go the Angel route. If I keep getting cards that discard other cards, they work well with the other Angel cards. We will see. But for now, it's the right hand's turn. Now if I pull a villain, Black Dwarf will escape, counting one towards the Mastermind's win condition. Would rather avoid that if possible, let's see if I can, and I don't. So it's a double whammy. Black Dwarf escapes, counting one against the win condition, and also there are two Scarlet Witches in the city, which means if I pull a Scheme Twist, which there are all the Scheme Twists in the deck right now, I transform the deck right away. Also another Scarlet Witch enters the city. So if the next card happens to be a Scheme Twist, which there's a good chance of, I haven't drawn any of the eight. The Scheme Transforms, I don't want that. Let's see what I can do first, Black Dwarf Escapes. Now we need to KO something. This is, this is actually really tricky, because all of these cards will be useful to me at some point. Let me see what I can recruit this turn before I make this decision. Okay, so it looks like the cards in my hand over here add up to four recruit points. I would be able to recruit this this turn if I don't KO it, but I really want these two on the left. I'm going to bank on, you know, this would work really well with Angel's other card because it would give me a better chance at drawing a card that has a high cost that I can get rid of. This is also good for direct attack and teleporting. I can't KO this because it's more than six. And this one works really well with other strength throws and adds attack. I'm going to say the one that has 
Oh, this is hard. I think the one that I'm going to let go is this Nightcrawler. I don't want to, but I think it's my best option. So let's... Oh, real quick, I forgot to mention something. Let's look at the transform scheme for a moment. So once this transforms, then it's probably going to. Evil wins when the number of non-gray heroes in the KO pile is 10 plus double the number of players. So just with having to KO something from that escape, it's counting against the future evil wins condition. Doesn't matter what kind of hero it is besides being non-gray. So anything I KO will affect that. So that's not going to change. All right, so we're going to go ahead and KO this Nightcrawler, and then we get a replacement. Oh, hey, look, it's another Coulson. Good setup for the left side. That Scarlet Witch is even stronger. It's a 7. So what do we have in the city right now? We have a 7, a 7, a 3, a 6, an 8. Although it does look like I'm going to be able to generate enough attack to take out that ring. All right, if I play everything, I have 4 Recruit and 3 Attack. Iceman's effect does not trigger. He needs a blue to trigger the superpower. So he's just a 2 Strength. So let's see that ring. So Remaker of the Matter Rearranger. Like I said before, when I fight it, I can choose a card from my hand or discard pile. I have no hand or discard pile right now, so it won't do anything. But I wouldn't really have anything to give to the left side except another gray card, which I don't really want to do. I have enough gray cards to send undercover as it is. So let's fight it. The fight effect does nothing, and we'll move on. KO it. And with our four recruit, we're going to go ahead and take this Captain Marvel. The more Captain Marvels in my deck, the more likely I can trigger Iceman's effect than any future Iceman I get. We'll just have to wait to draw more. I'm not really seeing a lot, which is disappointing. All right, if this is a scheme twist, the scheme will transform right now. I really hope it's not. Okay, well, it's Cousin, a Master Strike. Also not great. Okay, so if I have any cards in my hands that are at least one cost or more, they go on top of the deck for next time. So what do I have over here? Okay, one and two. <laughs> That's going to leave me with a pretty pitiful deck for this turn. And the right side looks like there's some good stuff here. Okay, just as Captain Marvel goes on top of my deck. Thanks, Apocalypse! So what am I left with? Man, it's a bucket of nothing. So I'm just gonna play the Shield Agents. They'll give me just enough to get a sidekick, and that's all I can do since this will only give me two attack and I can't fight anything for two. Well, at least let's see what sidekick we get. And we got Zabu. And the shortest turn ever is over. Again, I don't want a Scheme Twist. And, oh, I got another Scarlet Witch, which makes it harder when the Scheme Twist shows up. Yeah, this combination of Apocalypse making your hands pretty weak and the Scarlet Witches showing up and transforming, not a good combo, thanks everyone. Again, with the five cards I have left, I can't fight anything for two, so let's play our three agents. However, there's nothing here that is green or blue that I can afford to recruit. So let's cross our fingers, grab a shield agent, and hope it's something good. And we've got a standard Maria Hill. Could be worse. Actually, I don't know how it could be worse, but we'll take her. <laughs> Another devastatingly short turn. If I draw a Scheme Twist next, I'm in big trouble. And what is it? Okay, there's our Scheme Twist. Exactly what I didn't want, here's why. Twist, KO all non-X-Men heroes from the HQ. There goes our Coulson and our Captain Marvel. And let's quickly replace them. Now look what happens. If there are at least two Scarlet Witch cards in the city, and there are three, the Scheme transforms, so... Transform the scheme. House of M now becomes no more mutants. Special rules. Each Scarlet Witch in the city is a villain with attack equal to its cost plus four. If you fight one, gain it as a hero. So all these counters go up by one. As if they weren't strong enough before. Okay. So when I pull a twist this time, I KO all the X-Men heroes from the HQ. Play another card from the villain deck. And then evil wins when the number of non-gray heroes in the KO pile is ten plus double the number of players. There are two players plus 10, two times two, so that's 14 in the KO pile. I've already got three in there, so I'm only allowed 11 more KOs. Let's do some math here, okay? I have drawn one scheme twist. There are seven more. That means if there are one X-Men hero in the HQ and I draw seven more twists, that's seven and I'm safe. If there's two more heroes in the HQ, X-Men heroes each time, that's 14 and I lose. So for most of the scheme twists I pull, I can't afford to even have two or more X-Men heroes in the HQ. And at this moment, it's entirely full of X-Men. So my goal right now is to get rid of all the X-Men in the HQ by recruiting them, if I can, fill them up with Coulsons and Captain Marvels, and outlast the scheme twists, and then hopefully be able to win before I lose to the Apocalypse lose condition. Fun. Okay, it's time to get serious. All right, let's go ahead and play our sidekick just because. 
I get to draw two more cards, and I get another agent and another trooper. So all I can do with Approve Orbital Strike Coulson is to send a shield hero from my hand under cover. I don't have any shield levels yet, so I can't get plus one for anything. Zabu is also going to get rid of one of these cards if I decide to use him. So are there any of these cards I don't want this turn? The most I can generate looks like to be three attack. Seeing as how everything in the city is super beefy, I can't do anything with three attack. And by the same token, the most I could do with two recruit is get a sidekick. So there's nothing super useful I can do. I want to hold on to my shield troopers because I really need the attack, so I am going to send one of these undercover. If you're not familiar with the shield set, if I send one of these undercover, that means put it in my victory pile. And then the shield level equals how many shield cards are in your victory pile. So I'll send this to my victory pile undercover. Now my shield level is one, and there's one fewer gray card in my deck. Zabu lets me KO one of my cards. I'm going to KO this other shield agent, so KO this one. Doesn't count against the lose condition since it's a gray card. And Zabu goes away. And that just leaves me with three attack worth of shield troopers. There's nothing I can fight for three. I'm not even going to play them. That is going to be the end of my turn. All right, let's keep this going. And another Master Strike. Once again, making it hard to fight anything for two more turns. I said I wanted the Master Strikes early, but earlier than this. Once again, I take any card that costs one or more from my hands and put them on top of my deck. So the left side has one card. Well, that's kind of good. I mean, I want, would rather have it with that Colson card so I can get some extra attack. And then the right side, which I was about to play, again, just has the one. She keeps getting put to the side. Once again, thank you, Apocalypse. So that's going to leave me with four recruit, one attack. I need to get these X-Men cards recruited as fast as possible. Now, here's the thing. These cards don't go along with my plan for blues and greens over here. So I, ideally, I'd want to wait and not recruit any of these on the right side. However, if I wait, that means more of these have a risk of getting KO'd, which means that it's easier for me to lose. So high speed, look at high speed chase for a second. Draw two cards, then discard a card. So even though it's a covert card and doesn't really help with the blue and green, it may help me get an extra card that I could use. So it's not totally useless on a non-matching side. So just to get it out of the city let's recruit it over here to the right side and then hopefully we don't have an x-men card oh good our first non-x-men card if i keep this here permanently that means no more than four can be ko'd by the scheme twist i want to get that number down let's hope i can do it before the next scheme twist all righty our fourth scarlet witch so she's going to push super giant out of the city counting against the lose condition for apocalypse so apocalypse needs only two more different black order villains to escape in order to win it's tough fighting that and the scheme at the same time, but I guess that's what you guys wanted. Now, I get an opportunity to KO something. It has to be one of these. I'm going to KO one of the X-Men in hopes I replace it with a non-X-Men to prevent that slot from being KO'd in the future. Even though this is a 5 cost, I think it's going to be the least useful of all the cards I could possibly KO. While Coulson does have some tech cards, I don't think I'm going to have a surplus of them in the, in the HQ, so let's go ahead and KO Disrupt Circuits. Now I can only have 10 more non-gray cards in the KO pile before I lose. Again, let's hope this is not an X-Men. Oh good, it's not an X-Men. Cool. Three more spots I have to fill up and then I'll be safe from the scheme twists. Can't recruit anything though. However, it is totally possible to lose the scheme just by things escaping, so I really hope I get to fight something soon. But this turn is not going to be one of those times. Okay, nothing to fight, but with my four recruit, I can get a useful card over here. Let's take this Nightcrawler card. It simply gives you two attack and allows you to teleport it. Could be useful. Let's recruit it. And then once again, hoping for a non-X-Men card. And cool, it's another Captain Marvel. I am getting more and more safe here. I'm getting lucky. But like I said, I'm going to have to KO something next turn when that escapes, probably. All right, keep them coming. More Scarlet Witches. This Scarlet Witch is going to escape. These three are non-X-Men. This one is too high of a cost to KO. So unfortunately, I'll have to KO this one, hoping I replace it with a non-X-Men card. So let's see if that happens. Okay. So the good news is right now I'm in the super safe zone for all the scheme twists. The bad news is if I can't recruit anything else, I can't make my hands better and therefore I might not be able to fight anything. So the strategy going forward is this. As long as only one spot has an X-Men, I can recruit that card. Because, well, let me check. Yeah, so there are five non-gray heroes in the KO pile, which means that nine more in, and I lose. There are seven more scheme twists left. If I only KO one X-Men per scheme twist, that leaves two spots left in the KO pile before I lose. 
That means if seven of them get KO'd by Scheme Twists, I have room for just one more to get KO'd by an escaped villain. So I gotta walk a thin tightrope here. Some Infinity Gem artifacts would be very useful here, so I see an Iceman here, let's see what I can do. Oh, I might actually be able to generate a little bit of attack this turn. Supersonic Flight is simply get one attack, draw a card. There's my one attack, and let's see what I draw. It's another trooper, good, more attack. Ice Slide gives me two attack, plus one attack for each other blue ranged hero you played this turn. She is dual type, one of those is blue, so I'm gonna get a net three attack from this card. And finally, if I play my Shield Troopers, that is a total of six attack. Unfortunately, not enough to get the Power Gem, but there is one card I can fight, and it is this Scarlet Witch, which happens to be a blue card, which works well with these. Yep, no fight effect or anything, because technically she's a hero, but she has a 4 plus 2 strength, which is 6. But instead of KOing her, we recruit her to our discard pile. That didn't work out too bad. Alright, now our recruit points. Okay, we have 4. So these two Captain Marvels, are they worth risking the extra KO from the Scheme Twist for? Okay, all they're going to do is give me more recruit points, and then trigger superpowers for the other cards. Somewhat useful, but not enough to risk the Scheme Twist KOing more cards, so I'm going to leave these alone for now. So, should I get a Shield Officer or a Sidekick? There are special Shield Officers in there, but most of them are Maria Hills, and because I don't really need the Recruit Points right now, I need more Attack, I will take a Sidekick. And hopefully I get somebody good. Okay, that's good. Useful. Always, always good to get a standard Sidekick. And while I did my first something, can't be mad about that. Alright, I think I got this pretty well managed here, considering... And, okay, another one just moves into the city. No escape this time, thank goodness. The bad news is the city is full and the weakest thing in the city, the weakest things I should say, all are seven strength. Not a great place to be, especially when my artifact's about to escape. Darn, okay, so I drew Angel, but he's not going to be very useful this turn. I can discard a card to get attack equal to that discarded card's cost, but these are all zeros, which of course give me zero attack. So the most attack I can generate again is four attack, which will give me nothing and then three recruit, which could give me something if I wanted to. So let's ignore the attack cards. They're not gonna do anything for me and just play the recruit cards. So once again, I could risk it and take this Coulson. Let's see if it would be worth it. Okay, two attack, but and then if the shield level is three, which it could get to eventually, draw an extra card when you have a new turn. You know, the two extra attack in this game is almost worth taking him. But again, that puts me at risk of more KOs if this becomes a chain of X-Men cards. And there's still a whole bunch of Scheme Twists in there. You know what, I'm not going to recruit him, but I will take another Shield Agent because, again, I can always send it undercover if I don't want it. Hopefully I get a special Shield Agent that'll work with putting other things undercover. Alright, hoping for a special one. It's not, but could, could be worse. I just really need to draw this with the other Colson to get maximum effect. I'm guessing it's goodbye to the Power Gem. Yeah, goodbye Power Gem. Now, this is unfortunate. I have to do another KO, but I have to KO one of the non-X-Men cards because this one costs seven. Let's do this Captain Marvel and see what we end up with. So KO, and then hopefully something... Okay, interesting. This would be real useful to have. And I can recruit it without guilt if I can afford it because I want to get rid of the X-Men cards anyway. So if the Evil Wins condition was have Scarlet Witch fill every space in the city, Evil would have won by now. She's warping reality. Luckily, that is not the evil wins condition. All right, I might have a chance here. I have drawn two supersonic flights. So let's do the first one. Gives me one attack. And then I draw a card. Okay, cool. Let's play the second supersonic flight. One more attack. And then I draw a second card. I'll play our sidekick next. So we draw two different cards. And then we put that one back. Here they are. More of one of each. And then we put that back. Here's where High Speed Chase comes in. Draw two cards, then discard a card. What are our next two? Okay, interesting. I drew these two. Now, what do I want to discard? If I have both of my troopers, that's going to give me a total of four attack. And I still won't be able to fight anything with four. With this five... Actually, oh, I have seven recruit. I could take this Nightcrawler over here. So yeah, let's discard one of these troopers to get that Nightcrawler. Hopefully I survive this long with all these escapes, but this is a shot. So... Let's cash in all of these. And with the seven recruit, I am gonna go ahead and recruit this rare Nightcrawler. Doesn't really match the class, but uh, what are you gonna do at this point? Got, okay, another X-Men card in the way. And the bad news is, I have two X-Men cards out if a Scheme Twist were to be pulled. Once again, nothing to fight with three. So this turn is over, but maybe I'm making my way to something. Okay, one more escape and I'm halfway to losing thanks to the Scheme 
evil winds condition, and that's going to happen. So this ring is going to enter, this Scarlet Witch is going to escape, I have to KO something. This would indeed be a good card to have to get rid of some of the gray cards and to give me some attack, but I am going to KO it in lieu of the non-X-Men cards. And now I am halfway to losing. That's awesome. Oh, and we have Kitty's Rare. Untouchable, five recruit. When any player defeats a villain or mastermind with a fight effect, you may discard this card to cancel that fight effect. If you do, draw three cards. I don't know if that's actually super useful for this game. Well, that'll probably be one of the cards that gets KO'd with the scheme twist. But another henchman to maybe defeat. Oops, all grays. Can't even defeat a henchman this turn. And then with my five recruit, I could take this Iceman, but it pretty much is going to do nothing for the left side. It's for the right. Now, hold on a second. Look at this build the strike team. This is really good. Not only does it let me mill the shield officer stack for special officers, but as a covert superpower, I may send it undercover, making the other Coulson cards strong. It's kind of a triple threat here. Again, the risk is more X-Men cards in the city, more can get KO'd, and the harder it is to win. Oh, tough decision. Here's the way I'm looking at it. If I don't do anything, I might just lose by the sheer number of escaping villains, because I only need seven more escapes to lose, and Look at how many cards are in the villain deck. Of course, recruiting this could cause me to lose too, but I have to take a risk. I am going to recruit this and cross my fingers and hope I pull another Coulson or Captain Marvel here to save me. So I'll recruit it, and then let's see if it paid off for me. Oh no, it did not. I'm at super risk now. Great, great job, me. And with nothing to fight, I will have an escape next turn. Unless I draw a scheme twist in which three will get KO'd next turn. Now, if I can recruit nothing, Let's, for example, say that I have no X-Men cards here. I can keep sending things undercover over here and hopefully get a hand each time that would work. I don't know. We'll find out. This may be the scheme twist I really don't want. Oh, no, it's the Scarlet Witch I really don't want. Another escape. Let's KO this Kitty Pride, hoping for a non-X-Men card in the end. And we've got... Okay, another Coulson, so phew, safe there. Time for some more bad news. There are now eight non-gray heroes in the KO pile. Which means, when the total is 14, I'm only allowed 6 more. There are 7 more Scheme Twists in here. That means if all the Scheme Twists happen, and there's one X-Men hero in the HQ, I will still lose. So I need to get this to a net zero amount of X-Men heroes as soon as possible. Let's see what I can do this turn. Well, looks like I can get enough to fight that ring that does something. That's 3 attack, can't trigger her superpower without another blue card. But that is enough to KO this ring, let's take a look real quick. Okay, fight effect. Reveal the top card of your deck. You may KO it. I will not KO this. That would be bad for so many reasons. But I will KO this Electro Blast. Now I've got three recruit coming up. There's no way I'm going to risk taking this Captain Marvel at this point. I do need a little more recruit to be able to get this Iceman or even this Kitty Pride out of here. So I will take a Shield Officer, hoping it comes back around in time. And it is a Maria again. Iceman's coming next turn. Let's keep this going. Well, this has gone on longer than I actually thought it would. But I spoke too soon. There's our scheme twist. Okay, KO all X-Men heroes from the HQ. I have two. So, so much for getting this Iceman. They both get KO'd. Making it harder to win. Now, if I don't have any X-Men heroes here... Oh, there's one. And there is... Okay, so just one left. I just have to replace this one. And I should be okay for the rest of the game if I don't have to KO anything because of an escape. Okay, let me get rid of the scheme twist. And then I have to play another card from the villain deck. As if this were advanced solo or something. What do I get? Oh, cool! I forget that this chains. Well, at least I only have to KO one this time, so we'll KO Angel. Get rid of this. Oh, let's replace it. Hopefully it's not an X-Men. It is an X-Men. Three more, three more non-gray KOs, and I lose. Let's see what this is. Okay, phew, no more scheme twist. I didn't want that chain to go on any longer. That's going to enter the city. So three more escapes and I lose, or two more escapes and a scheme twist, whatever. I got to make sure that does not happen. All right, interesting mix this time. Looks like the most attack I could generate is four, enough to take out that ring. Fighting this ring lets me KO a card from my discard. All right, knowing that, man, I wish I could teleport this and use it with Angel. Okay, so I can send a hero from my hand undercover, a shield hero. I get one attack for each two shield levels I have. I only have one shield level right now. So I could send this one undercover. So I could send one of the troopers undercover because I'll still be able to fight that for the three I have left. But doing that means that I can't use that trooper anymore, and I really need the attack. So instead, I will send another one of these shield agents undercover, so he goes undercover. Now the shield level is two. The next time I play this approve orbital strike, I get one attack. Hooray. Now if I teleport this Nightcrawler, that means 
set it aside and add it to your next hand as an extra card. But I need him to get up to that three attack or else I might get another escape next turn. So I'm going to play him to get the attack points. And then let's play my two troopers here. I won't even bother playing this one here. All right, with three out of four attack, I am going to fight this Mandarin's Ring. It is Incandescence to Flame Blast. Again, I get to KO a card from my discard pile. In my discard pile, no wounds or anything, but I do have this shield agent. Let's go ahead and KO this one just to get it out of the way. So let's go ahead and KO it, and then we KO the ring. Okay, I bought myself a little bit of a window here. Okay, and we have our first bystander, a little bit of breathing room. That's gonna go to the first Scarlet Witch, and let's see what we can play. Oh, some good stuff here. I have drawn my rare Nightcrawler teleport. When you play or teleport this card, you may also teleport up to three other cards from your hand. So let me see how much attack I generate without teleporting anything, and then I'll make the decision on whether or not to teleport something. So let's see, what's the most attack I could get? One for this one, plus five for Nightcrawler. That's six, plus one for this Scarlet Witch, plus two. Okay, so this turn I'll be able to get rid of one of these Scarlet Witches. I don't think I'm going to want to teleport anything just because of that. So let's just play everything. Five attack from that card alone. Now Hexbolt lets me discard the top card of any player's deck, and I can play a copy of that card this turn. If I do that, I have the chance to play something good, but I can only trigger that with a blue ranged card. Ice Slide does the same thing, but that one can only give me one attack because I only have one other blue card if I decide to play Ice Slide second, after Hexbolt, of course. So let's see how much attack that would be. That would be five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10 for the bonus. So with that 10, I'd still only be able to fight one thing because these are all sevens and that's an eight and that's a 12. So give or take one attack is not gonna change anything. So you know what? I'm gonna actually use her superpower to make a copy of a card because that may give me more recruit or more of something else. So let's play it in this order. First, I'll play my other shield trooper, give me one extra. Well, actually, no, I may not need this either. Hmm. Okay, first I'm gonna actually play Ice Slide and just get the two attack from it. Man, I wish there was an Infinity Gem out right now. Okay, then I will play Hexbolt. Gives me one more attack. Discard the top card of any player's deck, play a copy. The best chance of having something that'll work with these is on the right side if I pull another blue card. So let's go ahead and reveal the top card and see what it is. Okay, it's just a shield agent, so I will discard it and I'll play a copy of it, giving me one recruit right now. Okay, so Hexbolt has been played. Now I'll play all my gray cards here. Okay, this is the most attack I've generated this game. Let me take out the strongest Scarlet Witch here for eight, and I'll gain it as a card. Let's go ahead and see what it does. Okay, I used this in one of my last games. Reveal the top card of the hero deck. You may play a copy of that. Pretty good. I'm glad that's universal instead of relying on a covert superpower. All right, uh, okay, this goes to my uh, discard pile. All right, with that three recruit, I'm gonna go ahead and get a sidekick again. And I've got cool, a sidekick with extra attack is uh, always welcome. All right, I'm slowly fighting back against this game. I've got a little bit of a buffer here, so I'm not too worried about whatever comes next. Okay, another Scarlet Witch enters the city. Another Chaos Magic. All right, I finally drew this angel with a card that has a cost. Let's play the uh, gray cards real quick. Now I have to make a decision. Do I want to discard this for angel or do I not? So I can either play this, get to attack, reveal the top card of the shield officer stack, and gain it or put it on the bottom. Can't send it undercover because I don't have another red card. Or, I can play this, choose to discard this Coulson card, and get attack equal to its cost, which will give me four attack instead of two. How much attack will I generate if I do that? Two plus four, six, plus two is eight. If I don't do that, I only get six attack. Six is not enough to fight anything, and eight is enough to fight everything, so I'm going to have to go this route. So let's play this angel card. Uh, first, I get two attack. Then I'll choose to discard build the strike team, which will give me a tactical to its cost, so I discard this and get four more attack. All right, now onto the fight stage. I'm inclined to fight this Chaos Magic since it's the highest cost card, and it can be the most useful in helping make sure that I keep the X-Men cards here. So I'll go ahead and uh, fight slash recruit it right from here. Okay, now with my two recruit here, I'll guess I'll get a sidekick. No, no uh, real question on that. And we've got another standard. Okay, not bad. I really want some Infinity Gems though. That'll really help me win. Let's hope this one is. It's another Mandarin Ring. Not quite what I meant, but okay. An easy fight lets me KO something. Let's see what I can do. All right, so before I play this to help discard anything, 
At the most, this will give me four recruit. One more recruit and I could get this Kitty Pride out of the way. Wouldn't really help me though. Okay, let's just go ahead and play this so I'll draw two cards and see what I get. Oh, cool. Captain Marvel and another Maria Hill. But now I have to discard something. So the most attack I could get right now is one, two, three. Plus whatever I draw with her, but that's enough to get this ring. I'm not gonna use all this recruit. I have more recruit than I need right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and discard this card right here. Okay, now I'll play Supersonic Flight so I can get my one attack and draw a card. Let's see what I get. Okay, another trooper. And if I play everything else I have, I end up with a total of a four attack and five recruit. The only thing I can fight is that Mandarin's ring, so might as well do it. Fight, KO one of your heroes. All right, let's fight it for three and KO this other shield agent because again, attack is priority. So we will KO the ring and then KO this shield agent. Sorry, shield agent. All right, now, as far as recruit, I have generated enough recruit to get this Kitty Pride out of the city. Disrupt Circus gives me one attack for each tech hero in the HQ. Pretty sure we're going to end up with no tech heroes in the HQ, so at its worst, it gives me two attack, which is not terrible, especially with my Captain Marvel draw cards floating around there and with Angel. So I'll go ahead and recruit it. It might help me out more than hurt me. Not really building the decks I thought I would, but I guess that's a product of circumstance. So if we end up with a non-X-Men hero, I am totally safe from any more scheme twists. Bad news is I didn't. Good news is if I can survive till two turns from now, this would be a great one to have on the right side. That means if there's no scheme twist in the next two turns, which odds are there will be, but we'll just have to wait and find out. All right, crossing my fingers for no more scheme twists. And it's not a scheme twist, but it's a Black Order guy. Okay, Corvus Glaive has the worst danger sense, and by that I mean the best danger sense to them all. Danger sense three, helping all Black Order villains and the Mastermind. Corvus Glaive captures a bystander revealed this way. Let's see what's lurking at the top three of our villain deck. Okay, we've got a villain henchman Mandarin's ring, a Master Strike, and another henchman's ring. The bad news is he gets two attack. The good news is there are no scheme twists here, and I can put these back in any order I want. Let's put the Master Strike at the bottom. And let's just put the Mandarin's rings like this on top. All right, but I do have to give the bonus to Corvus Glaive and Apocalypse. Corvus Glaive is now a nine this turn because of the Mastermind and the Danger Sense, and now Apocalypse is a 14. I don't think I was gonna fight him anyway. Interesting, okay, so the weakest thing in the city are these Scarlet Witches, all sevens, and it looks like I'm only gonna be able to generate four attack at the most here. Because of that, I'm gonna choose to Teleport, Nightcrawler. Again, teleport means add this as an extra card to my next hand. So let's go ahead and teleport him. And that's gonna leave me with full recruit to attack. Nothing to fight for two, but with this full recruit, I'm not needing to urgently recruit him on the left side, even though I don't want him, because I know the next three cards are coming. None of them are scheme twists, which could mean I might be safe to take one of these. However, I don't think that's worth the risk in never getting a non-X-Men card there again. I only have to have three more cards KO'd in order to lose, so I'm gonna leave those where they are, even though they'd be useful. It's kind of painful not to recruit them, but I'll take a sidekick instead. No, you know what? I'm gonna risk it and try another chance to get a special shield officer. Now let's see, this is... No, it's not a special one. Oh well, and I guess that's it for this turn. All right, I know what's coming for the next few turns, so the ring enters the city, and I'm gonna be embarrassed if I can't fight it. Okay, cool, I can not only fight it, but I can recruit Iceman this turn. Let's do the recruit first. Okay, four recruit, easy recruit right here. And let's see if I can build up my safety wall. Not yet, but another Iceman to recruit. Let's get my one attack from Supersonic Flight, getting a lot of mileage out of these ones. And let's see, what will I draw? Oh, sweet, that certainly paid off. So let's see, the most attack I can get this turn is five plus two to make seven, plus one is eight. If I decided to teleport this instead, Hmm. Now, if I teleported this instead, I'd only have three attack. Now, I could teleport it and then use the three attack to fight that ring, since I know another ring's coming and then a master strike. Oh, but if I do a master strike, yeah, if I teleport this, here's what'll happen. It'll be in my new hand for next turn. This turn's gonna draw the ring and probably fight it. And then before this turn, I'll draw the Master Strike, causing this teleport to go to the top of the deck. So I won't be able to use it in two turns. So I'll use it now because otherwise it'll just be um, apocalypsed away. So let's play both of these. Gives me a total of eight attack. 
This one gives me plus one more attack for each tech card in the HQ. There are no tech cards in the HQ, so I just get the two attack from here. Oh, I've already spent this. This is gone. So the question is, should I fight Corvus Glaive or one of the Scarlet Witches? They're exactly the same strength, but if I fight one of the Scarlet Witches, I'll have to take them on this side. They do have a... Well, let's look at, let's look at them. To recruit, not super important right now, but if I use it, reveal the top card of your deck, discard it or put it back, but it triggers Dark Memories if I have a Covert card played before it. Now, here's the thing. Here's what Dark Memories is. I look at my discard pile, and I get one attack point per every different kind of class of card. And I know in this deck I have green, blue, red, and black. So this would actually be the best side to use Dark Memories versus that side, which does not have any, as many classes in it. So Dark Memories would actually be valuable here, and I do have some Covert card to trigger it. All right, in that case, let's go ahead and take out this Scarlet Witch for seven. We rescue the Bystander, and we gain this Scarlet Witch as a hero. So essentially, it's an attack slash recruit. And the bystander is rescued, and there's an empty city space. Pretty productive. This is saving me. All right, the next Mandarin's Ring enters the city. And thanks to Teleport, I've got seven cards now. Let's check out Chaos Magic. Reveal the top card of the hero deck. You may play a copy of that card this turn. When you do, put that card on the bottom of the hero deck. And let's reveal it. We have a Nightcrawler. If I play a copy of it, all I get is two recruit, which is not great for this turn but it doesn't go to the bottom of the hero deck unless I play a copy of it. So, I'll just go ahead and say I did so. So I play a copy of it and I get two recruit points. And now it goes to the bottom of the hero deck. So there's only one way here for me to get three attack this turn. First, I have to play Nightcrawler. Blend into Shadow just gives me two attack and if I play it, I can't teleport it. Now I have to play a Prove Orbital Strike and I have to pick the second option where I get one attack for each two shield levels I have. The shield level is two. There are two shield cards in my victory pile, so I get one more attack if I choose that option, which I will. That's enough to take out one of these rings. Which one should I take out? Daimonic the White Light lets me draw a card if I fight it, and Nightbringer the Black Light lets me reveal the top three cards of the villain deck. You may defeat a villain you revealed worth two victory points or less. Do its fight effect, put the rest back in any order. Okay, so if I do this, I might be able to stave off this Master Strike for a little bit longer. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and uh, KO Nightbringer real quick. Now we look at the top three cards of the villain deck. We know this one's a Master Strike already, and the rest we have are, oh, an Infinity Gem and a, and a Bystander. Now check this out. This is cool. So it said I can defeat a villain worth two victory points or less. Infinity Gems are worth zero victory points, so I basically defeat it for free. And because its fight effect is to put it in my discard as an artifact, a Mandarin's Ring just gave me an Infinity Gem. Pretty awesome. And I don't even have to do the ambush effect, because it never entered the city. However, this is one of the worst Infinity Gem abilities, because I get to take a turn after this one, which doesn't really help, and I can only use it once. Oh well, a free defeat is a free defeat, I guess. Now I'll put the rest of these back in any order, and of course I'm going to put the Master Strike on the bottom, and I think that'll work out for me. Okay, now I'll play the rest of these cards here. Okay, I've got seven recruit, but I don't really want to recruit anything. I could go recruit, 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 but that these could easily be replaced with three X-Men. I draw a scheme and twist eventually, and then I lose. I don't want to risk that. I've got enough, enough good cards here, so let's turn that into, should I take another shield officer? I've been getting Maria Hills this whole time. You know, I'll just take one of each. We'll see what happens. First, I'll take a sidekick. Okay, here's what I got. And then we will try and take a shield officer. Okay, another Maria Hill. Oh well. Okay, moving on then. It's a little anticlimactic to know what's coming next, but I prefer it over to uh, being in trouble. So this, somehow a Mandarin's Ring captures a bystander. I'm not gonna question it. I didn't really think about this. I, I guess this means not only is Apocalypse somehow commanding the Black Order, but he's got all the Mandarin's Rings on. I'm not gonna lie, I would read that, I would read that comic series. All right, let's try this Chaos Magic again. If this is a good card, I'll be very happy. So I'll play a copy of this. Okay, there's absolutely no shield level over here on the right side, so let's go ahead and send a card from my hand under cover. Oh wait, 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 shoot. Do I even wanna do that? Okay, uh, rewind for a second. Okay, it says, you may play a copy of that card this turn. When you do, put that card on the bottom of the hero deck. That means I don't have to play it right now. I can play it at any time during my turn. So I'm gonna wait a second because I wanna find out uh, what this card draw is gonna get me before I make a decision on playing a copy of this. Okay, Hairball gives me one attack and then lets me draw a card. All right, let's see what I get. 
Okay, cool. It's a Captain Marvel. This goes to the sidekick stack. So let's keep drawing cards. Let's play Supersonic Flight. And I'll get my attack and draw a card. And I hope it is something with Recruit. Not really, but we'll see how this can help me. Okay, one more attack. Things are adding up that way. Okay, discard the top card of any player's deck. Again, I'm going to go with the right side in hopes that this is something that might be blue. You may play a copy of that card this turn. Let's see what it is. It is. It is. Nice. No, I'm not playing the card. I'm playing a copy. So let's put the Hex Bolt down and see how we can do this. Okay, so this card is discarded, but I'm playing a copy of it. So first I get two attack. Then range. You get plus one attack for each other range hero you played this turn. I have played two. So I get two more attack. Okay, this goes back to my discard. Awesome. Added with the two other shield troopers I have. That makes an attack total of nine. Before I use it, let's go back to this copy of Coulson here. Okay, so when I choose a shield hero from my hand to send undercover, I was really wanting to recruit this. Although maybe I still can. If I fight this Mandarin's ring, I get to draw a card. But nine minus three is six. I can't fight any of these big things for six, so I don't think I'm gonna be fighting this this turn. So then this three recruit won't get me anything I want here, so I am gonna go ahead and send this one undercover with this copy of Approve Orbital Strike. So this one goes undercover, just means I basically put it in my victory pile and one less shield gray card in my deck, which is not bad. Okay, and then this Coulson goes to the bottom of the hero deck. I probably should have not used it so that it would take the place of Iceman, but that's not what I did. So hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. Okay, and this last uh, Maria Hill gives me two more recruit. All right, so with my nine attack, all three of these are seven, but again, dark memories would be really useful for this uh, deck since I have a lot of different classes of cards. So I will take out this Scarlet Witch for seven of my nine and uh, gain her in my discard. So uh, take care of that. And nothing left to do with my two attack, but with my two recruit, I will gain one sidekick. And we've got a Throg, okay. So if I manage to pull a whole bunch of dark memories that chain on each other, I can get some really high attack, maybe take out Apocalypse and uh, win this, but we will have to see, time will tell. All right, here comes the inevitable Master Strike. That was the penultimate Master Strike, so I only have to do this one more time. Let me see what I'm going to have to put on the top of my deck. One, two, three, four. That only leaves me with two cards. My next hand should be good, but uh, this hand will not. And the other side, I think, got off a little more easy. One, two, a little bit. Luckily, I have these two gaps here, so even if two villains enter the city, I have time before too many escape. Yeah, not much to do with two attacks, so this is pretty much the end of my turn here. All right, for the first time in a while, I have absolutely no idea what this is going to be. Let's see. Another Mandarin's Ring. I forget. Do I have three attack here? No such luck. Can't find anything with this. This will just give me two recruit. I don't even have to pull it up. I'll just take a sidekick for this. And it is, oh, another blue one. And another short turn, but I did leave a buffer here, so I think I'm okay. We'll see what I get next turn. And we've got, ooh, my next infinity gem, the soul gem. Oh, this is bad. Ambush, soul gem gains a shard for each villain in the city. There are four villains in the city. The scheme says Scarlet Witch is a villain, so yes, there are four villains in the city. So four shards go onto this soul gem. Now it is a 10 strength. Okay, getting a little scary again. All right, let's play this sidekick for a little bit of extra help. Okay, there's only one card in my deck. It's a trooper. Let me shuffle my discard and get my second card. Okay, second card I just shuffled is another trooper. Again, I don't think I'm going to be recruiting anything this turn. So let's drop off a friend. I get two attack from this. And the card I will be discarding is this shield officer, which means I get three attack from dropping her off. Not bad. I still have plenty of attack to get. Okay, build the strike team gives me two attack. Then reveal the top card of the shield officer stack, gain it, or put it on the bottom of that stack. Let's see what's on the top. Cool, it's my first special shield officer. Okay, so Grant Ward can go undercover and then KO another hero. Doesn't give me any attack or anything. So all this will do is help increase the shield level. But is this something I want right now? Yeah, I, I'll take it. Why not? It'll help me get rid of an extra gray card. So I'll put that in my discard. Plus, I can just get rid of it at that point. I can't send it undercover, but I'll be able to do that later. And now we'll play everything else. And wow, I've generated 10 attacks, so you know what that means. I can fight this soul gem and gain it and get a shard along the way. So let's take care of the shards first. When I fight it, uh, all the shards go back except for one, which is the one I get. Okay, and let's look at its fight effect, like the other infinity gems. 
I put it into my discard pile as an artifact. So into that discard pile it goes. I could have taken out two of these, by the way, with 10, but the only way I could take that soul gem out with was with 10, so that was probably the best decision on my part. And I do have one recruit I didn't account for, but can't do anything with that, so let's move on. Okay, let's keep it going. All right, another infinity gem. Oh, there's an ambush on this one too. It's the reality gem. Reality gem gains a shard for each infinity gem villain card in the city and or the escape pile. I don't think any have escaped. Oh no, I'm wrong. The power gem escaped early on. There are no infinity gems in the city thanks to my last turn, so it's only going to gain one shard. All right, let's see what I have to play. All right, I'd like to get some more blue cards to get Iceman to work well, so let's play this angel. Draw two cards, then discard one. Let's see. I get, cool, Captain Marvel and another shield agent. Now let's see what to discard. Okay, so I have enough to recruit Iceman with. One, two, three, four, recruit. So there's one of these shield agents I don't need right now. So let's go ahead and discard this one. All right, I have one blue card, a chance for more. Let's play this. Gives me one attack and I get to draw one more card, which is going to be another trooper. No more chances to get blue cards, so let's play Iceman. Ice Slide gives me two more attack and then plus one for each other blue hero I played. I played one blue hero, so I get one extra attack to make four total. All right, now we'll play everything else. Now I have six attack and two recruit. So six attack is enough to take out this reality gem, but do I want to do that? I could either take out the reality gem or both of these at the same time. These I can't take out for six. Yeah, I should get these gems as artifacts on the field as soon as possible, so let's use this six attack to uh, take this one out. So first I get the shard, and then it goes right to my discard pile. And then with my four recruit, I will take this Iceman. If I don't draw an X-Men, then I'm safe from all this game to us coming next. So first I recruit, and now moment of truth, let's see. The identical card. Well, that just means hopefully it'll be there for me to recruit next turn. That's it for now. The villain deck is starting to get small. I hope I'm able to take out Apocalypse sooner than later. I want to hold on to that Iceman. Please, no scheme twists, and... Okay, not a scheme twist. Black Dwarf comes in with Danger Sense 2. Let's look at the top two of the villain deck. What do we have? Oh, a scheme twist and a non-scheme twist. Okay, I have uh, if I, I have a chance to recruit this next turn if this is my villain card for the right hand next turn. But Danger Sense does give one point to Apocalypse and Black Dwarf because I pulled her. Luckily, I did not pull the Master Strike or Black Dwarf would have had me play it. Okay, some more good things here. Looks like with Nightcrawler and this Trooper, I can generate three attack without needing to use this, which means I can use this to send somebody else undercover. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, blend into shadows and this trooper give me a total of three attack. Let's use that three attack to take out one of these rings. Now would I rather draw a card or discard all of my zero cost cards from the top of my deck? Drawing a card is not gonna really do anything for me. I'm not gonna recruit anything and I'm not gonna have enough to fight anything. So let's go ahead and make my next turn better. Spin the Vortex Beam, fight, reveal the top six cards of your deck, discard all of them that cost zero, then put the rest back in any order. First we'll spend our points to fight it. Now let's look at the top six. Here we go. Infinity Gem, Scarlet Witch, Trooper, the Officer, Red Wing. Oh, I need to shuffle and get one more card. And the last card is a Trooper. So let's discard both of these because they cost zero. And I'll put the rest back in any order, which doesn't really matter because I'm gonna draw them all next. And we KO the Vortex Beam. Okay, now, I will choose to send a shield hero from my hand undercover. It will be one of these shield agents. This one goes undercover. The shield level is now three. All right, so I'll play these two. Gives me three recruit. I'm going to try an officer again. I must have uncovered some good ones, so let's see. And we've got a Maria Hill. Oh, well, I'll be able to try to send them undercover later. Okay, we know what's happening. She's going to ambush with her danger sense. So we know that Danger Sense 1 gives her nothing because this is a scheme twist and I didn't reveal any villains, so there's nothing to play. So uh, she does nothing basically for her ambush. Now let's hope I can actually either recruit this or fight something or hopefully both. Okay, this looks good. So it looks like I'm not going to be able to trigger her dark memories because none of these are covert cards to meet the superpower trigger. Uh, that's too bad. However, I can generate enough recruit to get that Iceman. Oh, wait, wait a second. I thought, th I thought this was a tech card because of the background. However, it is a covert card, so I'm going to go ahead and play it, and I do get to trigger the superpower. Awesome. Five attack, I can choose to teleport something. I'll make that decision in a little bit. If I don't play it, I'm probably going to teleport it. Or do I have to choose now? What does it say? When you play or teleport it, you may also teleport up to three other cards. Okay, so before I play it, let me see what I'm going to do 
to find out if I'm going to teleport or anything else. So I'm going to play that, which will trigger dark memories. So I'm definitely going to play this. Let's pretend this gives me no... Well, actually, I can, I can find out. Let me look in my discard. So dark memories is going to give me one attack point for each different class of cards. So that's blue. That's one. That's blue and green. So the green makes two. Red makes three. So three attack from dark memory. So that's going to be five plus three. It's going to be eight. Two is 10. 11, 12, 13. Plus the shard if I want to is 14. So I'll have enough attack to hit the mastermind. However, hmm, I have a full city. Maybe I should clear the city out. What's the most I can take out with 14? You know what? These have plus two because of uh, apocalypse. Can't forget that. So with 14, I could take out both of these, seven and seven, or these two, eight and, f eight and six. So you know what? I'm just going to get all 14. I'm not going to teleport anything because I want these two recruit to get Iceman. Okay. No teleports. Got it. So five attack from Nightcrawler. Moving on. Let's play my two recruit point ones. First, Maria Hill gives me two recruit, and then Scarlet Witch will also give me two recruit when I play her, but I will also need to do Dark Memories. Oh, I never did the... I forgot about the effect. So I do get the two recruit. Reveal the top card of your deck. Discard it or put it back. If it's a tech card, it's not... Hmm. Discarding this is not going to give me better Dark Memories, so I can use it next turn. I already have a red card in the discard, so I'm going to put this back on the top here. And I already looked in my Discord, I have three different classes of cards, so I get three more attack. Now that I have four recruit, let's go ahead and recruit Iceman. And am I going to be saved from this scheme twist? No, I'm not. But at least it'll only have to KO one unless I chain them. I'm allowed three more KOs, and then I lose, so we'll see if I can get by. Disrupt Circuits only gives me two attack because there are no tech heroes in the HQ. Unfortunately, Lockheed does not accompany another ranged card this turn, so I get two more attack, and he goes to the sidekick stack. And then finally, I play my last shield trooper, or my only shield trooper. Okay, 13 attack. Let's clear out the city a little bit. First, we'll get rid of the Scarlet Witch here, fight it, and recruit it. Leaves me with six attack. Should I save this shard and go after somebody else and fight this Black Dwarf without spending my shard? Maybe I should do that. Okay, I could fight it, KO one of my heroes, and I could KO this Maria Hill because I don't really need her anymore. So let's do that. Let's spend six and KO Black Dwarf. Okay, and his fight effect was KO one of her heroes, so we'll KO Maria Hill here. Okay. All right, I'm ready for this scheme twist. Hopefully, it doesn't play two or three. All right, scheme twist time. Just a reminder, KO all X-Men heroes from the HQ, so Nightcrawler gets KO'd. And we replace him with... Oh, awesome. I finally have my impenetrable wall. So I have to play another card from the villain deck. Let me see what it is. And it is awesome. I have my wall. Nothing gets killed. There are no X-Men heroes in the HQ, but I do have to get rid of this and play something else. I hope it's another one. Let's just get rid of all the scheme twists. No such luck. It is Scarlet Witch is rare. Oh my goodness. With the help of the scheme, it is an 11. That is very strong, but would be a very great card to have. Okay, just to recap, I have 12 non-gray cards in the KO pile. I'm only allowed two more before I lose. There are three more scheme twists. So if I were to get rid of this wall somehow or let something escape, I'll probably lose if I let all the scheme twists come out. So I'm going to try my best not to recruit anything or let anything get KO'd. I think I have enough attack potential if I keep using things like undercover with the shield cards to make that work. So we'll see. Okay, my hands are getting very magical here. So let's see. I get to play my time gem if I want, so I'll play this as an artifact. Once again, when you play this artifact, take another turn after this one. Use this ability only if this is the first time any players play the time gem this game. Do I want to do that? I want the right hand to take another turn. So before I play this time gem, I, I want to find out if I want to take another turn or not, so I'll put this to the side. Let's do Chaos Magic real quick, reveal the top card of the hero deck, and... Okay, this is good news, I'll tell you why. So. I can either A, choose to play a copy of this card, or B, leave it on top of the deck. If I choose to play a copy, what can I do? I can send a card under cover, I get to attack, it's pretty good. However, since I know it's on the top of the hero deck, I only have to put it on the bottom if I play a copy of it. If I don't play a copy of it, it will stay there, which means I can safely recruit one of these cards for the left-hand side without worry of there being an X-Men card. I think that reveal has given me the confidence to do that. So I won't play a copy of it. However, if I get enough recruit, I'm going to recruit this one. Let's play my sidekick. Look at the top three cards of your deck. Draw one, put the rest back in any order. Okay, I'm going to put them down here. I've got all gray cards. Do I want more attack or... Oh, you know what? Here's how I can get the most attack. No, wait, that won't work. 
I just need three attack to take out this Mandarin's Ring this turn. So, all in all, I'm not going to generate that much attack this turn. So, I will draw this Maria Hill, and then I will put the rest back. So, I can use him next turn. Sidekick goes away. Okay, drop up a friend gives me two attack. I may discard a card and get attack equal to its cost. Let me go ahead and discard this Maria Hill here, and then gain three attack. Okay, there we go. Now, let's look at Grant Ward. You may send this hero undercover if you do KO another uh, hero from your hand. So that's why I brought this one back. I'm going to send this undercover, and then I'm going to KO this Maria Hill. So Grant Ward goes undercover, bringing the shield level up to four, and now we get to KO Maria here. It doesn't count against the KO since she's a gray hero. So now with five attack, I can take out either this or... No, I can't take anything else out. So let's fight the Mandarin's Ring. Demonic the White Light. First, I, oh, I rescued this bystander, and then quite effect is draw a card, so I will fight it and draw that card and I get another trooper. But first I will KO this ring. And if I play this, my attack goes back up to three. I could have fought something else with that, but can't now. Okay, do I want to play the time gem? Let me see what the hand looks like on the right side. Okay, this looks good. I can trigger dark memories. This is very full. Um, I think I want my right hand to go next. So I'm not going to play this time gem. It's going to go right back into my discard pile and Maybe I'll use it when I feel like it. But other than that, it's uh, the right hand's turn. All right, another mystery. It is going to be Corvus Glaive. Danger sense three, he captures bias. I think I've already pulled both bystanders, so that won't happen. But let's look at the top three of the villain deck, which is getting smaller and smaller, and I haven't hit Apocalypse once. Okay, top three, Scarlet Witch. Scheme twist, Scarlet Witch. Wait, hold on. Does Scarlet Witch, hold on a second. I think I may have been doing this wrong. I don't think he gets any points from Scarlet Witch. Let me look at the scheme real quick. Okay, Scarlet. each Scarlet Witch in the city is a villain. So when they're not in the city, they're not villains, I guess. Okay, you know what? Because of that language, when they're villains in the city, when they're in the villain deck, I don't think they're villains yet. So because Danger Sense only gives them points for villains, I don't think that Scarlet Witch gives them any Danger Sense points. Interesting. So by that logic, they don't get anything from Danger Sense for this turn. And because I have my wall here, I'm just going to put the Scheme Twist right at the top so we get it over with uh, on the next turn here, even though I'll know I'll have to play that Scarlet Witch after. But he will enter the city, and he'll get his plus two for uh, the Mastermind. All right, let's see how this crazy hand plays out. Oh, I never recruited anything on the left side. But that means I could recruit... No, she won't help me out. Hmm. Yeah, I KO'd my Maria Hills instead. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Oh, well. So once again, I can choose to play a copy of this or not. Uh, I'm going to continue not to. It's more important to have the wall right now until all the scheme twists are gone, or at least most of them. But Chaos Magic does give me the superpower uh, trigger for Dark Memories, so I get two Recruit here. Not like I'll necessarily use it, but I do get Dark Memories, so let's see what I have. Do I still just have three? Oh no, I have red, black, blue, yellow, but that's four. That's good. So four attack from this Dark Memories. Let's get our one attack and draw a card. Okay, let's see what we get. Another agent. I wish I drew more of these in a turn, but whatever. Two attack, and then one more attack for this blue card I played. So that's three total attack. My two gray cards give me one of each. Throg just gives me two more recruit. I didn't generate six, so I don't get the plus two. Oh well. And now he goes away. So with nine attack, unfortunately, I am too short from this Scarlet Witch rare card. And I have this shard, but that'll only give me plus one. If only that Throg had worked. Oh, hmm. I could still play this. Okay, so I decided not to play this at the beginning, and this was the trigger for Alter Reality, which caused this draw card. So it wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be honest to go back because I didn't know how the turn would end up. So I can't rewind it and play this. If only I had. Oh well. But I do have nine attack plus the shard if I want it. So what can I do? Seven. This is eight. This is uh, eleven, and this is eight. I still don't want the uh, Black Order to escape be for a couple of reasons. Let me look at Super Giant one more time real quick. So Fight Effect, you may KO a card from your discard pile. Could be useful, so uh, let's KO her for 8. And now we KO a card from my discard pile. I think I'm going to go with a Shield Agent if I can find one. Uh, I don't see one. Oh, here we go. So we will KO this Shield Agent right here. Let's take another sidekick with two of these five recruit. I really want to draw more cards. Okay, perfect. This is what I wanted. All right, I think I can do this next turn. Okay, so we play our Scheme Twist. Nothing here gets KO'd, that one goes away, and we play the next card that's there. Which is this Hexbolt enters the city, gets plus two. Or plus four. Uh, okay, not a great hand, but I did get the Soul Gem. 
Artifact, whenever you defeat a villain, put a shard on Soul Gem from the supply. Once per turn, you get attack equal to the number of shards on Soul Gem. Ooh, that's pretty good if I can keep that going, but I don't think I can defeat anything this turn. All right, I'm gonna have it right here as my artifact so I don't forget to use it. How much attack can I generate this turn? Just four, but let me see this Coulson card a little closer. Reveal the top card of the Shield Officer stat, gain it or put it on the bottom of that stack. So what do I have? It is, okay, a special one. I can send stuff undercover. I'm gonna take this. And then if I play my other gray cards, I just get three recruit. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and recruit one of these. Gives me two attack and lets me, let's well, just take a look. Yeah, my shield level's four, so I can trigger this every time that I play it. I basically get an extra card at the end of uh, next turn and I get plus two attack. Plus I know this will replenish it, so I don't have to worry about breaking my wall there. So let's recruit this for three. I love this theming. It's like uh, the X-Men are being hunted down, so it's up to shield agents Captain Marvel and uh, Agent Coulson to save the day. All right, this goes into the spot. Don't quite have enough attack points to fight anything, so the Soul Gem is gonna have to go shardless for now. I really hope that I can fight something next turn or I will face another KO and um, that'll be a problem. Okay, one more Hexbolt Scarlet Witch villain enters the city. So at a minimum, I'm gonna need six attack points in order to clear out a spot in the city. Let's see if I can do it. And it looks like I'm just gonna be able to, so uh, let's see how we're gonna do this. Kitty Pride goes to disrupt circuits, but there's not a lot of circuits to disrupt, so I only get two attack. Now between these two, the only way to get a guaranteed six attack is to play Scarlet Witch and then Iceman, so that's what I'll do. If I played Scarlet Witch first, I could, uh, or if I played Iceman first, I could use Hexbolt to play the copy of the top card of either deck, but there's no guarantee I'm gonna get my last sixth attack point without having to use my shark, so um, let's avoid that. Let's go ahead and play this first. I get one attack, but that's it. Then Ice Slide will give me two plus one for the Hexbolt I already played, so that's a total of three. There I get six attack, and if I play these three cards here, it's gonna give me three recruit as well. Okay, so I have six attack, one shard available, three recruit. I could spend my shard and take out one of these, but I'm still gonna hold on to it because I can, and I'm gonna take out this uh, Hexbolt Scarlet Witch and recruit it by fighting it. Okay, save from an escape, three recruit. I'm gonna get one more sidekick. It's a regular sidekick, awesome. I think I have a couple of these. They should stack up pretty well. All right, let's keep going. Thing up next is... Another Hex Bolt. Let's see what I can do. Okay, I'm gonna just play this Time Gem so it doesn't keep cycling and taking up a spot in my hand. So let's play it. I'm gonna have to take another turn with this side, but uh, I'll do it anyway. Oh, and I finally got this combo here. Okay, two attack, and then I get to discard something and get attack equal to its cost. I've got this Orbital Strike Colston here. Now the shield level is four, so I could play this and get four attack or discard it and get six attack. Six is greater than four, why not do that? So discard this card to get six attack and I've got eight just like that then uh, do I need to play this uh, nightcrawler to get ten total Ooh, this is tricky if I had ten plus a shard I could fight and get this Scarlet Witch but she triggers dark memories if you've played three Avengers cards now most if not all the Scarlet Witch cards are over here on the right side so she would be best suited over here hmm so yeah, I'm gonna save that to hopefully get a cool Iceman combo, pun intended, and uh, get that Scarlet Witch. So I am going to use all eight to fight one of these Corvus Glaives instead. Actually seven of the eight to fight this one. There's no fight effect, so it just gets KO'd. And then real quick, look at the Soul Gem. Whenever you defeat a villain, put a shard on Soul Gem from the supply. There we go. Once per turn, you get attack equal to the number of shards on Soul Gem. So I guess I get to do that now since there's now a shard on Soul Gem. Yeah, so once per turn, so whenever. So I get one bonus attack from Soul Gem. I'll trigger that now, because why not? So if I play Nightcrawler, it's two attack. I can't fight anything for four, so here's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna teleport Nightcrawler and use him next turn. So he's gonna teleport. Okay, and I have three recruit. Well, I'll play it so I have three recruit. And we'll just get a sidekick. And cool, that's a regular one. So finally, I've played the Time Gem, so I do have to take another turn after this one. All right, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead and start that second turn. So left hand gets another one. Okay, before I start, I'm gonna flip the time gem upside down to show that it is exhausted and I can no longer use it. And a new villain card, I guess. Get another Mandarin's ring. I wish I got the soul gem when there were more henchmen out, but uh, beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. Okay, well, let me play Chaos Magic then. What do we have on top of the hero deck? Hmm, another Coulson, which means I can recruit something safely. So I won't play a copy of it, unless I decide to. Hold on. How much attack can I get? Two, four. I have enough to fight the gem. 
Oh, and I can trigger this for two more after that, or before. If I triggered before, then I have five total attack, plus a shard is six. Okay, let me do this. I have four recruit points to get, so let me go ahead and get those. And with those four recruit points, I'll recruit another one of these uh, Colsims here, so recruit this. Okay, so I'll choose not to make play a copy of him with Chaos Magic and put this Colson in his spot. And uh, that's it for Chaos Magic. And let's play, hmm, should I use the shard for the third attack and teleport this for next time? Or should I save my shard? What's better? Oh, I don't need to. I don't need to. Here's why. Um, I play these for two more. Okay, two attack here. Then the soul gem lets me trigger it once per turn to give me attack based on how many shards are on it. And there's one shard, so I get one more attack. Perfect. So now I have three. I can hit this uh, Mandarin's ring. Influence the impact beam. Fight, you get one recruit. So I fight it. It gets KO'd. And I get a recruit out of it, so because there's nothing else to fight for two, I will teleport Nightcrawler once again, so teleport. Oh, and I can't forget to get um, my extra shard for fighting a villain, so one more shard for the soul gem. It gets a little stronger. All right, and uh, if I keep, keep building him up, how many villain cards are left? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven more turns. Is that enough to fight Apocalypse? We'll have to see, but for now my left two turns are over. Okay, next, let's get this over with. Okay, Ebony Maw shows up. Ambush. Choose villain, master strike, or scheme twist. Then danger sends three helping all Black Order villains and the mastermind. Play all the cards you reveal this way of the type you chose. Well, I guess I'll choose scheme twist because if I play them, I still have my wall here. But then I'll have to play something else after that. I don't want to choose villains because something could escape. And I don't want to choose master strike because I don't want to ruin my hand. So let me go ahead and pick scheme twist. All right, let's see. Here's the top three. One, two... Oh boy. Okay, so this is not good for a couple reasons. First, let me make sure Ebony Ma gets his plus two. The best choice would have been uh, Master Strike, but uh, I didn't know that. So I have to put these back. I have to play all the cards that I called. So I called Scheme Twist. So first, okay, so first I have to finish the Danger Sense, which means I got to put them back in any order. I will do Mind Gem on the bottom, Reality Gem. Scheme Twist. Okay. Now I have to play all the cards that I called, and I called Scheme Twist, so I have to play this Scheme Twist. Luckily, nothing gets KO'd. However, I have to play the next villain card, and the next villain card is indeed something that's going into the city. So, my rare Scarlet Witch is going to escape, unfortunately, which in turn means I must KO something. So let me KO this uh, Captain Marvel because I don't really have a choice, which not only means that the KO pile has... 13 non-gray cards I am one away from losing, but I have to replace something in the HQ and let's see what it is I really hope it's not an X-Men. Shoot, it's an X-Men. Okay, so this is what that means If I don't have my full wall up and I pull another scheme twist, I lose or if I let another villain escape, I lose So there's one more scheme twist in there. It's not the next two cards But this one has to enter the city right now not only that, it has an ambush effect. Reality Gem gains a shard for each Infinity Gem villain card in the city and or the escape pile. That we still just have the one in the escape pile, so it's only going to get one. But, if I can't fight anything this turn, the game's over and I lose. So, hopefully I can do that. Okay, luckily it looks like I'm going to be able to fight something. I've drawn my Reality Gem. Unlike the Reality Gem here, it's in my hand, so let's take a look. Before you play a card from the villain deck, you must first reveal the top card of the villain deck. If it's not a scheme twist, you may put it on the bottom of the villain deck if you do gain a shard. Okay, well I can use that to my advantage with, uh, with a danger sense, hopefully. So that goes into my, onto my field. Next, I have two Iceman Ice Slides here. Okay, so I get two attack for this one. I can trigger uh, the effect of the second one. So the second one's gonna give me two more attack, and then one more attack for each other blue hero I played, which is only this one, so one more attack. And then I'll have played both of those. And then my shield trooper is going to give me one more attack after that. Which literally gives me just enough to fight the weakest thing in the city. Which either is the reality gem or um, this Scarlet Witch. And since I already have a reality gem and uh, the blue goes better on this side, I'm going to take out this Scarlet Witch here for six. Okay, that was close. Well, I don't lose next turn. Let's play Ultra Reality. Too bad I couldn't use Dark Memories this turn, but uh, let's get my two recruit. Plus one for this one. Let's just add them together. Three recruit total. Reveal the top card of your deck. Discard it or put it back. I am going to put this back. I'm glad this is coming next turn. Great. So I'll get one sidekick for two out of the three recruit. Or wait a second. Should I take that? Should I, should I recruit this? Oh, yeah. Check this out. 
This will help me if I ever get a next men back out here. It'll help me try to get a non X Men back in the HQ. So I will recruit this. Hopefully this next one won't be an X Men, and I'll I'll be fine. So recruit. And let's see. No. Okay, that's really bad. That's gonna be really hard to get out of there. Oh shoot. Okay. I mean, it's a good card. Maybe I can generate seven recruit, but I don't know about that. Might cost me the game. We'll we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. I'm not gonna say it's over yet. Let's keep going. All right, we know the mind gem's coming next. Mind gem gains a shard for each scheme twist in the KO pile and or stacked next to the scheme. All right, there are none in either place, so no shards for the mind gem, thank goodness. My left hand's turning out to be more of the powerhouse, so I think this will help. Okay, running out of room here. What do I want to do first? All right, I play impeccable planning, so I get two attack. My shield level is plenty high, so I will get a uh, new card at the end of the turn. All right, impeccable planning. I have two attack. Uh, shield level is four, so I meet the shield level three. When I draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn, I get an extra card. All right, not bad. Once again, I get drop off a friend, so I am going to get two attack from this card, and I'm going to discard my six class Colson and get six total attack. Now I've got 10. I love how that works. Now I'll play all my gray cards for three recruit and one more attack. And then finally, I have Nightcrawler and I have my soul gem to consider. If I play them both right now, that's plus two, plus two, that would give me four, that would give me 15 attack. I really need to clear out the city even though I haven't hit the mastermind yet. If just one of these escapes, I lose automatically. This is also troublesome. The next card could very well be a scheme twist, which means that would get KO'd and I, uh, I lost the game. But I can't, generate, uh, I can't generate any more recruit no matter what I do. So I'm just gonna have to hope that that is not a scheme twist next. There's only one left, I really hope it's not. Actually, you know what? I could trigger the soul gem after I fight a villain first. So for 11, what can I fight? What do we have? Seven, six, eight, six, six. I could fight a seven and a six, but I could fight both of these. And then I could have a bunch of infinity gems over here. I could do that while teleporting a nightcrawler again. So let me do that. I'm gonna spend, I'll spend six to fight this mind gem. Okay, so it's gonna give me recruit, maybe help me get that angel before it's too late. But uh, I don't know. Let's just spend six attack and put it into my discard. All right, and now the soul gem gets another shard. So if I trigger the soul gem, I get three more attack, which will give me a total of eight. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and with that eight attack, yeah, the reality gem is not gonna be super useful right now. So let's just take out the highest cost thing, which is Ebony Maw. So we'll KO him for eight. Okay, with that last three recruit, uh, let's take a uh, sidekick. And it is a regular one, cool. Oh, I defeated another villain, so I get one more shard over here. Okay, so that means my next turn I have five attack built in right here. I teleport uh, Nightcrawler once again, and it is the next turn. I really hope I don't draw a scheme twist. All right, let's see if the game is over right now. Oh, thank goodness it's not. But how long have I delayed it for? By the way, I intentionally did not use the reality gem, because if I did, uh, what would happen is this card would go to the bottom i'd pull another one and that could be the scheme twist so that wouldn't have been a good idea but let's let her go into the city all right do i have enough to recruit this angel i really hope so doesn't really look like it but let's see what i can do okay i could either play all this give me five attacks six seven eight plus whatever i draw or i could teleport hmm i could play this and teleport three other things and get a really really good next hand maybe to get enough recruit to save me even though there's not that many cards in the villain deck but that would likely mean if I teleported this and one, two, I wouldn't be able to do anything this turn. So if this is a villain, let's see if my left hand could handle it next turn. My left hand has, oh, this actually is good. If I do nothing, my left hand can handle it. We're gonna take a gamble. We're gonna have Nightcrawler teleport a whole bunch of stuff and delay until the next turn. When you player teleport this card, you may also teleport up to three other cards from your hand. So we'll teleport Nightcrawler along with Chaos Magic, uh, Supersonic Flight, and another Shield Trooper for that extra attack. Now, if I decided to attack with this, instead of teleporting everything, I'd get five, six attack, plus a copy of whatever this is, seven. I could take something out here, but it may cost us the game if I can't do a bigger move next turn, so we'll do that. So my turn is over here. I really hope this was not a mistake. However, if this is a scheme twist, I would have lost anyway, so no big deal. To the left. Okay. Again, if this is a scheme twist, the game is over, and, oh man, I didn't see that coming. Talk about a wrench in my plans. Once again, that means take all the cards in your hand that cost one or more and put them on top of the deck. 
I think that might have just cost me the game. So even if I fought something last turn, well, I don't know. I don't know, let's see. One, two, three, four. That's really devastating this late in the game. All of these go to the top of my deck. These are all that is left for this hand. And what's super devastating is the right side with that big teleport hand I was waiting for. So check it out. This would have been my hand next turn and it would have been absolutely incredible. However, I don't get to play any of these for two, for three whole turns. Oh my gosh. And I lost the extra cards from the teleport. I only get to draw six. They all go to the top of the deck. I'm really disappointed by that. What are you gonna do? Let's see, what can I do? Tell you what I can't do, get enough uh, recruit for this angel here. So I got two attack plus four from the gem, so that's six, so I can fight something. I'll use all six of this, six attack, fight the gem and uh, gain it, as well as its shard, and uh, yes, that gets recruited. And I get an extra shard here. All right, all right, let's get this over with. Okay, now here's the deal, that enters the city. Space gem gets a shard for each empty space in the city. There's one, so one shard for the space gem. And uh, this is the only card I have, so nothing happens. Big waste of time. And back to the left. Okay, there are four cards left in the villain deck. One of them is a scheme twist. Will it be this next one? Yes, it will. So Angel gets KO'd. I now have 14 cards in the KO pile, which is 10 plus two times the number of players. And unfortunately, Evil has won. I have to say you guys picked a really fun setup for me. I felt like I had a good flow at the beginning and I was getting to somewhere where I could actually do something. I don't know if that massive turn that I could have done over here if I didn't pull the Master Strike would have done anything. It was really this last angel that uh, got me. But even if I didn't pull that Scheme Twist, I don't know if I would have been able to hit Apocalypse. Maybe my, my, my uh, perfect uh, plan would have been this. Angel wouldn't have been here. I would have done my big teleport. I would have hit po Apocalypse a couple of times and then I could have squeezed out a win. But this was a very difficult setup, but uh, a lot of fun to do. So thank you guys so much for participating in the 100 subscribers special. I definitely plan to do another poll-based game in the future. But until then, make sure to stay tuned to Bagel Top Games for all other randomizer, expansion pack, any other special games, including viewer requests that we do. Make sure to uh, like and subscribe as well. It really helps out the channel. Make sure to follow our Twitter and Facebook pages linked in the description as well. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care.